son, where do you think you're going? Oh, to some of the boys. Too bad you won't have a chance to go over there with the others now, isn't it, Charles? I'm not kicking. The Wardens have never shirked our duty to our country. Now, when I fought at Manila, the mayor's off again. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Your Honor. Six bottles, right off the boat. The labels are still wet. Well, Joe, you know, I suppose you'll have to be paid for that. Well. <laughs> oh, I'm going out to celebrate, son. Sure, if I hang around here, you'll send me off to bed. <laughs> Try to get in, Harley, dear. Oh, Mother, about Edith, I... No, I know just what you're going to say, Charles. And the answer is still no. Oh, but she's a darn nice kid, Mother. Well, Father and I have other plans for you. And Edith Ellis doesn't fit in. Now run along, darling, and have a good time. Thanks, Your Honor. I'll be seeing you again next week. Right you are, Joe. Good night. <laughs> now, folks, we'll get down to the case. Or, uh, should I say box? <laughs> <laughs> say, that confounded bootlegger tipped me out of a pint. Don't you report him to the police, Warden? I will. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're supposed to be celebrating. I don't feel like a child. I'm scared. Hey, Well, this just came off the boat, and that came... I know, but I've had enough. Oh, what's gotten into you tonight? You ought to be happy. I don't have to go to war now. I am happy. I'd much rather have a live husband than a dead here. Edith, have you told your folks? Well, of course not. I want to spring it on them at the same time you're telling yours. Look, honey, this, this armistice business makes everything different. I thought if I went across it, well, they'd be so happy when I got back that they'd overlook anything. Well, the way things are now, Dad might even have the marriage you know now. Oh, but he can't do that. So I thought if we kept it secret for a while yet, well, until I get a job anyway, well, you could go on with your law course and I'll... What kind of a job? <laughs> I'm not the mayor's son for nothing. Plenty of strings that a smart guy can pull to make money, and well, I think I'm kind of smart. Hey, you two, why don't you get up and shake your stick? You're missing all the fun. Sure, swamp party. You're strong. She's strong. The mayor sure buys swamp stuff. Lift your heart. What the use of today needs is bigger and better armistice. Can't your father pass a law or something about that? <laughs> Gee, it's almost one. Well, I promise mother okay, I'd Okay, so uh, don't you worry about it at home, baby. I'll get you under the wire and nothing flat. Yeah, I was afraid of that. The bubble cry of freedom. Sitting hospital. What's that? Yeah, right away. Another job for you, Hank. Track up. Another one? Say, whoever thought up this armistice business anyway? Where is it this time? At the corner of Elm and Main. Just a little accident, officer. I couldn't help but have saw him over the lamp post this morning, could I? If you take us to jail, you'll be sorry. Well, how? Our friend there is son of a mayor. <laughs> Don't cry, honey. It's all right. Have you heard anything, Phil? It isn't bad. It's mother and dad. Don't say I had it coming to me. Oh, Charlie, we've got to tell him. We've got to. Don't worry, Dad will fix everything, and nobody will be the wiser. This is disgraceful. I don't know how you could ever get yourself mixed up in a mess like this. Oh, Dad, you don't understand. I do. It isn't his fault. It's the company he's been keeping. Doctor, how is she? There are no internal injuries. Nevertheless, your daughter's a very sick girl. If you just step out into the hall. Well, what are we waiting for? The girl's all right. Let's go home. Wait, Dad. I ought to see her first. Now, Charles, if it hadn't been for that girl, you wouldn't have had such an accident. Now, come on. No, I, I've got to see her. I can't run out on her when she's in trouble. Stop arguing and do as you're told. 
I... I'm sure. There isn't a doubt about it. This is a mess. Oh, it must be all right. I'll find out the truth. May I go in? Yes, sir. Uh, but you mustn't excite her. Of course not. I wouldn't do anything to harm her. Go to the here. Edith. Where's Charlie? Edith, tell me it's all right. I mean that you and he... Yes. We're married. I thought he was going away to the war. I thought I might never see him again. Where is he? He's gone. Without even taking the trouble to come in and... No. You might have expected that from a Walton. Do his folks know? No. And they never will if I can help it. But you can't. We're married. Well, don't worry, dear. We'll find a way. She's married to Charles Walton. But that can be annulled. But what about Edith? She'll go to her aunt in Evanston. And when the child comes, we'll place it where it'll be well cared for. Well, I haven't seen you for ten years, you know. It isn't my fault. I've invited you here often enough. Put the blame on me, Dory. I could never get away to bring her. <laughs> you folks should have come to visit us. I've always wanted to see Cousin Betty. Mmm. This is good. No, I'll say it is. <laughs> I can hardly wait to taste it. Let's see down upstairs. There she goes, trying to get out of the dishes again. Oh, I am not. I thought she'd be glad to get rid of us. You want to talk business with Uncle anyway, don't you? Come on. The girls want to get acquainted. Joseph and I'll do the dishes. Oh, just like home. <laughs> Poor Daddy, you're terribly henpecked, aren't you? Oh. Dorothy, how did Betty find out about Carol? She read one of your letters, but I made her promise never to tell. Well, I hope not. We want the child to go on thinking she's our own. Gee, I wish we were going to stay longer than a month. I'm going to love it here. What side of the bed do you sleep on? Well, any side. Take your choice. I hope you don't snore. <laughs> oh, no. I stayed awake all one night to find out. <laughs> That's a big help. Do you smoke? No, thank you. But I don't mind others doing it. I suppose your parents are like mother and won't let you. Well, of course they'd let me if I wanted to. But I don't think they'd like it. On moral grounds? Oh, well, certainly not. It's just that we don't have any secrets from each other. And anyway, Daddy says it's bad for the health. Oh, it's good for the ass. But Mother would have a duck it anyway, so I have to go on the theory that what she doesn't know won't hurt her. Oh, that's enough unpacking for now. 
Have you any boyfriends, Carol? Not gilded. Have you? Just one. The son of the newspaper editor. And we're going to be married. Really? Well, he doesn't know anything about that either. Oh, he's a honey. Just wait till you see him. But don't you try to take him away from me, or I'll tear you down and put up a museum. Cross my heart and hope to die. <laughs> What's his name? The boy's name is Bruce Jefferson. Oh, don't put the cups on that shelf. And he's as wild as a naked. Just leave him out. I'll put him away later. Does he in love with this young man? With a boy who's on probation for juvenile delinquency? I've forbidden her even to see him. Joseph. I think I broke a cup. Well, if you're not sure, you need glasses. That's why he never helps with the dishes at home. We'd all be drinking out of saucers. <laughs> I think you'd better go back to the living room. Yes. Got a finger. Yes. Mother, I'm going over to Ethel to return her book. She's Betty's best friend. Aren't you going to take your cousin? I was going to help with the dishes. Well, I didn't think she'd want to go. Don't be silly. Ethel's like to meet her. Put on your hat. You like Ethel. She's such a sweet, refined sort of girl. All right, come on. What are we waiting for? Goodbye, Mommy. Mm -hmm. I'm awfully sorry they forced me to go with you. Well, good heavens, why? You might as well meet my friends first as last. Well, I thought you resented my coming. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, look who's here, Bruce. What are you doing in this neck of the woods? How are you, Betty? This is Carol Carvel, my cousin. She's visiting us. Hello. Bruce Jefferson, the fellow I told you about. Remember? Mm -hmm. um, how do you do, Miss Caldwell? Bruce always does just about what I tell him to, don't you, honey? Yeah, sure. Excuse us a minute, Carol. I have something terribly important to ask him. Mm -hmm. I just simply couldn't get you. Mother forced you to come along. Well, that's all right. I want to get home early tonight anyway. Mother and Dad are taking me to see the judge tomorrow morning. Oh, yes. This is your last day of probation, isn't it? Yeah, I'm sure glad it's over. Oh, well, me too. I'm simply dying to get out and do things again. Well, now listen, Dad. If we're going to go on dating steady, it'll have to be someplace where we're not ashamed to be seen. It was only blind luck that I was able to keep your name out of this, and I don't want to take any more chances. <laughs> you are a hero, darling, to take all the blame. We'll do whatever you say. Okay. We've got to beat it. Call me at Ethel tomorrow. She'll be. Okay. Well, uh, so long, Miss Caldwell. I hope I see you again sometime. Bye. Bye. Good luck. Thanks. I'll meet it. Come on, let's get going. Aren't you forgetting something? No. What? The book you were going to return to your friend. Oh. Let's us both forget about it. Sit down and make yourselves at home. Her Honor is just trying the last case. Thank you. I've carefully investigated the matter, Your Honor. I found the girl's mother in a deplorable condition. There wasn't enough in the house to eat, although I found several half-empty bottles of gin. Where is the girl's father? He ran away with another woman over a year ago. Since then, the mother of this girl and her seven-year-old brother have been unreleased. The father must be made to support the children, even if you have to put him to work on the road. It's up to you to locate him at once. But the girl refuses to attend school and stole numerous articles of value. Hmm. To sell for enough money to buy food with. Here. Yes, ma'am. I mean, dear. Yeah. Yes. And you refuse to attend school because your fellow students tease you about your father. Gee, how do you know that? I mean... <laughs> Most so-called problem children come from broken homes to steal. If you steal to buy food, how can your mother afford to buy liquor? Whenever she gets a tip from the meat people, <laughs> he sends me to the cocktail bar of Mr. Carson's nightclub. He catches it when I tell him I'm 18 and gives me a quart Just for... a minute, please. Mr. Carson, step up to the bench. Is that true? My the lease made out in my name, and I pay the license and taxes. Are you in the habit of selling intoxicants to minors? Of course not. It's against the law. A good percentage of our juvenile delinquents claim to be patrons of your establishment. How do you do that? I can't help it if they lie about their ages, can I? Please be advised that this court will no longer tolerate these conditions and govern yourself accordingly. That is all. Call this Smith. I'd like to see the girl's mother, Mr. Burke. Simply just trying to drown her sorrows in drink. 
And the children, as usual, must bear the brunt of their parents' mistakes. Give her a good deal and send her home. Come on, Lucille. The Jeffersons are waiting, Your Honor. Thank you. If I ever hear of your being in a place like that again, then I'll slap your ears down. And I don't mean maybe. But why, Dad? You go there yourself, don't you? Bruce, don't be impudent. We're older than you are, and we know how to conduct ourselves. Anyhow, I hope this has been a lesson to you. And to you, too. I wonder which one of you needs the lesson most. How are you, Bruce? Fine, thank you, Judge. May I ask you to explain that remark, Judge Ellis? You and your wife are blaming the boy for being a delinquent. But in reality, the fault is yours. Are you suggesting that we've neglected our bringing up our son? Frankly, I am. Hmm. You are both tied up with so many social obligations that, well, you're away from home most of the time. Well, just who is on probation here? My wife and I or our son? You are. A boy of Bruce's age needs your confidence and sympathy more than at any other time in his life. It's strange to me how people who've never had children of their own know so much about how a child should be raised. Well, Judge Ellis knows all about it, Mother. She's made it a life study. That will be enough, Bruce. Well, are we at liberty to go now? I have a newspaper to get out, you know. Yes, Bruce's probation is at an end. But I shall hold you and your wife directly responsible for his future conduct. Very well. Hmm. I'm sure if you do your part, Bruce will do his. Thanks, Judge Ellis. You've been great. You know, it's too bad you never had a child of your own. You'd have been a swell mother. Of course I'm happy, Charlie. I'd much rather have a live husband than a dead hero. Are you hurt anyplace else? If it isn't that, it's mother and dad. They'll say I had it coming to me. Oh, Charlie, we've got to tell them. We've got to. Do we spokes now? No. And they never will if I can help it. Oh, but you can't. We're married. She'll go to her aunt in Evanston. And when the child comes, we'll place it where it'll be well cared for. Folks have gone up, and anyway, I've been out of circulation for so long, I'm getting used to it. Well, thanks for the invite. Behind the prison walls, behind the prison walls, oh, we can't have fun on the run. Behind the prison walls, behind the prison walls, behind the prison walls, you can't have fun on the run. Behind the prison walls, <laughs> Gee, where's the fire? Well, aren't you surprised, honey? We're going to give you a party. Get going, kids, and make yourself to home. <laughs> Can you sit back and marry anyone I please? And I said, yeah, but who do you please? <laughs> hey, what do you bet they're advertising toothpicks? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, you don't need to. Let's do the big apple. Right. Oh, here we go. It's a celebration. 
And, honey, to welcome the lost sheep back into the fold. But, Betty, you must be crazy if the judge hears about this. I'm... Oh, you're safe in your own home, silly. And besides, it's about time you have a little excitement. Yeah, it ought to be exciting enough with that, Mom. Well, I came here to congratulate you. What does one say at a time like this? Then should Mary Donaldson be merry? I'm right along and have a nice, good time. Hey, Ned, come and dance with the little girl. Pleasure's all mine. <laughs> It's a surprise on her, too. She thought she was just going to meet some of my friends. Oh, but I suppose she'll go home and tattle to Mama and Papa. And when she talks to them, they get all the gruesome details. Yes, and if my folks come home, I'll get all the gruesome details. Oh, they've gone over to Ethel's to play bridge, and she's going to call me when they're ready to leave. You know I think of everything. Now, come on, stop grouching. Let's you and I dance. <laughs> And this will really fix your proper. Come and get it. Look who's here. That man is here again. Here's Al. Would you excuse me for a minute, please? Well, yeah, but uh, hurry back. Come on. Oh, boy. Ruth, you're acting like a sick gopher. Come on and relax. Well, I'm sorry, Bet, but I just don't feel like doing nip-ups tonight. Well, you're certainly not going to curdle my evening. Ned, let's dance. Why not? Here. Use us, Bruce. <laughs> We kind of spilled our drinks, didn't we? Well, so we did. What a coincidence. I'd be glad to get you another. Oh, I wouldn't want to push it all that bothered, but uh, you could go out and get some fresh air with me. Well, that'll take us out of the rubber plant anyway. <laughs> well, let's go. You ought to get Bruce to take you over to the Cutters Club. It's plenty hot. Oh, you can't get him to go any place since probation made him a torchbearer. Well, I'm not on probation. Hmm, looks like you and I had a date. How does it feel to be on probation? Oh, <laughs> like being in jail at first. Then you get so you sort of like it. It gives you a chance to think, and when people think, they usually behave themselves. Well, did you do something so very terrible? Oh, no worse than those kids in there are doing. Only we happen to get caught in a police raid. We? Now, Betty and I. I got her out of the way before she was recognized, but they saw me. So that's why her family won't allow her to see you. Well, what's that? You know, I was wondering why she was meeting you secretly, especially since you were engaged. Engaged? Say, what is this? Well, maybe I spoke out of turn. Wait a minute. Did she say we were engaged? Maybe we better go inside. Because we're not. And I didn't know I was meeting her secretly, either. Oh, I'm sorry I said that. But I can't understand her that she allowed you to take the punishment without doing anything to help you. Well, would you expect her to tell? Well, certainly. It was just as much her fault as yours. Listen, what would you do if you were in a spot like I'm in now? I mean, with that gang in there. I didn't invite them here, and I don't want them. Well, it all depends on what your parents would say. They approve, I suppose it's all right. That's just it. They don't. Where's Bruce and that girl? What girl? My cousin. I haven't seen him for 10 minutes.
I'm sorry, kids, but the party's over. What do you mean, over? It's so early. Oh, it's so real. No, he's just kidding us. No, I'm not. I made a promise to Judge Ellis, and I'm going to try and keep it. What's the big idea? Getting sleepy, Bruce. Bruce is going soft. Listen, I made a mistake once, and from now on, I'm going to watch my step. I don't want to be a killjoy, but you'd all do me a favor if you'd get your things and go home. Did you put him up to this? Well, of course not, Betty. I don't believe you. Betty! I know how she'd feel about the party, but I thought if she was in on it, she wouldn't go home and pat to her folks. Now, don't try to make a patsy out of her bed. Bruce! Oh, so it's Bruce now, is it? Please, Betty, don't say anything you'll be sorry for. I know how he feels. Come on, let's go home. My mother's waiting for me. Her mother. She's not your mother, and I'm not your cousin, and I'm not going to have you tell me what to do. What do you mean? Think you're too good for me and my friends, don't you? Too good. When you don't even know who your own parents were. Shut up. Oh, try and make me. The little goody-goody doesn't even belong to the Caldwell. She was taken out of an orphanage when she was two but years old. Don't you dare say that. It isn't true. Oh, it isn't. All right, ask him. Ask my mother. She's known it for years. What? Why, Jesus? Why, Jesus? Why, Jesus? Why, Jesus? Why, Jesus? Why, What is it, dear? Tell mother. Are you my mother? Are you? Carol, what makes you ask a question like that? Betty said you weren't. She said I was an adopted child. That you and Daddy took me out of an orphanage. Is it true? Is it? Carol. Please remember our promise. No secrets, no lies. Yes, it is true, dear. Try not to feel too badly about it. You are our daughter. In everything but the matter of birth. Why didn't you tell me before? We wanted you to go on thinking you were our own child. I used to pretend you were. I pretended so much that... Eventually, I almost made myself believe it. Who are my real parents? I don't know. Well, then there might have been anything. My father might have been a murderer. And my mother... It's no disgrace to be an adopted child, dear. We love you perhaps more than if you were ours, because we chose you. We picked you out of a lot of others and said, that's the little girl we want. That's our daughter. If you'd only told me when I was first able to understand, I would have been used to the idea as I grew up. And I wouldn't have been living a lie. Neither would you. You, who've always prided yourself in your honesty. Honesty. You haven't even been fair. You shouldn't say that, Carol. Well, I'm grateful for everything that you've done for me. You at least cared. That's more than my own mother did. If she had, she wouldn't have let anything in the world come between us. Who was she? Oh, I hate her for doing this to me. You've done everything in the world for me. But from now on, I've got to make my own way. That's my job. Sweet romance has beckoned to your heart and mine. Every little second could be... Well, it looks as though she's going to be all right. You sure know how to pick them, boss. <laughs> it's a gift. Let's be bold and daring While we have the chance Once around the clock And then 
Good night, one perfect hour with you. Once around the clock to hold you tight, one thrilling rendezvous. Time marches on, so be tender. Gentlemen, I leave it to you. What kind of an animal throws a scent? Listen, Carol, I don't like to see you working here any more than your parents do. And I don't like to see you falling to the line this Carson guy is handing you. Suppose you don't. What difference does it make to you? Well, it just happens that I'm in love with you. Now do you understand? I want to marry you, Carol. We don't always get what we want, do we? I know it'll be all right with my folks. They'd like to see me get married. Oh, please, Bruce. Do you realize that I don't even know who or what my parents were? I don't care about that. All I know is they must have been pretty swell to have a girl like you. Suppose I did marry you. We'd want children, wouldn't we? Well, I couldn't bring a life into this world without knowing. Do you understand? It looks as though Betty had liked to kill me. She doesn't know that she almost did. You better go now. I have a job to do. I'll be back tomorrow night. There goes your ex-boyfriend, Bet. Looks like Carol's giving them the air. As far as I'm concerned, they're both washed out. And I'm glad to be rid of them. Mr. Carson wants to see you in the office. Okay, thanks, Joe. Yes. I didn't want to drag you into this, boss, but I'm getting nervous. That Ellis dame means business. So she's going to close you up. How inconsiderate. She can do it, too. Listen, maybe it'd be smart for us to lay low for a while. After the election, we can... What's the matter, Carson? Turning saw? I happen to know the ropes in this town. I can settle your little problem without any fuss or bad publicity. Leave it to me. It's Carol, Mr. Carson. The kid I told you about. Come in, Sugar. I want you to meet Mr. Wharton. He has a slight uh, interest in the club. How do you do? Mr. Carson tells me you're responsible for bringing us a lot of new business. Well, I want to make good. That's the ticket. Stick with us and you'll wear diamonds. Eh, Carson? Maybe fur coats. Well, how about a car? <laughs> Cute, huh? Don't work too fast, Kitty. 
Is this your first visit here? Nope, I was born here. My father was the mayor at one time. Well, then you ought to know your politics. I do. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I have to go back to work. I'll run you over to your apartment after we close up. Thank you, but I've already ordered a cab. Goodbye, Mr. Uh... Wharton. Charles, to my friends. Mr. Wharton. Well, what's the verdict? Your taste is improving. Don't let her get a hold on you, though. Bad for business. <laughs> Where are you going? Yeah. Tell if anything important comes up. Well, what about this judge? Suppose she takes it into her head to pull a raid or something. I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. Nothing at all. What does the judge want to see me about? I haven't done anything. She just wants to talk to you. Well, tell her I'm working. Now, listen, Miss Caldwell. I don't like to remind you of this, but by getting your young friends to come to this place, you've been contributing to the delinquency of minors. Oh, so what? This is a misdemeanor, if you force me to make it so. Well, what are we waiting for? She says she was as stupid as something you other two minors. I don't know what, and the judge wants to see her right now. Is he still down there? No, sir, he took her over to the judge. Give me the Metropole Hotel, will you? Go on, beat it. Hello? When Charles Wharton comes in, tell him to call Mr. Carson at the Cuddles Club. Tell him it's important. Yes. Here she is, Your Honor. She was mighty nice about coming. Cattle, cattle, darling. Oh, so we're going to have a legal wrangle. No. We're just going to try to understand one another. Sit down, my dear. I'd rather stand, thank you. Do you mind if I call you by your first name? Why not? Nobody knows my last one. Carol, do you realize you're acting like a very poor sport? Why, Mr. and Mrs. Cole will love you dearly. Ever since you came into their family, they've devoted their lives to you. They were wrong not to tell you before, but you've been with them ever since you were... How old? Two years. We adopted her in 1921. She was born in May of 1919. The second, I think it was. What? What was the name of the home? It was the nursery orphanage near Chicago. Judge Ellis. What's the matter? Excuse me. I've been in court all day and I... Carol. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor before you go. I want you to put yourself in Mr. and Mrs. Caldwell's place. And see how you would feel if the child you love suddenly turned away from you. Remember, the only thing in life that matters is love. Jack, take her back to her apartment, will you? Yes, Your Honor. Judge Ellis, you're much different than I thought you'd be. You're very nice. Goodbye. You think she'll understand? I'll see her again soon. When you're not here. After she's had time to think. I'll... I'll see her again. Thank you. You made an impression on her, and that's all we can expect for the present. Come on, Mother. Good night, Miss Ellis. I mean, Judge. We're very grateful for your help. Good night. Charles. Hello, Edith. Just going home? Yes, I am. I just got into town this afternoon. Thought I'd drop up and say hello. Aren't you afraid to stay here after dark, alone? Why? Why should I be afraid? Oh, I don't know, but people in your position must have lots of enemies. Which means? My headquarters in the big town, but I have a few places of business here. One of them happens to be the Cuddles Club. 
I heard that cotton was only a front for someone higher up. Exactly. I get a good revenue from these places, and I wouldn't like to see them closed up. But that's just what we set out to do. Oh, you shouldn't do that. I have a soft spot in my heart for you, and many happy memories. I'd hate to see anything happen to you. <laughs> Nothing will happen to me. You can't always tell. We read a lot of strange things in the papers, don't we? Things that don't always look well in print. Would your activities stand looking into? <laughs> My reputation wouldn't suffer much. Is this Carson? This is Wharton. Everything's Jake. The lid's off. Good night, Edith. Bright eyes. They told me over at the hotel. Yeah, I've been trying to get you for the last two hours. You didn't try the right places. What's up? Plenty. I thought you told me not to worry about that Ellis Dane. You said she was all fixed, that the lid was off. That's right. She's in the bag. That's what you think. Take a look at this. That's a summons. All signed, sealed, and delivered. Can you fix that? Illegal gambling. Running a public nuisance. Contributing to the delinquency of... <laughs> she can't get away with this. She's doing it, isn't she? I tell you, that baby's dynamite. Don't be a sap. The customers won't talk. They wouldn't dare. The kids would be afraid of delinquency charges. Oh, it's all right for you to talk. She can't pin anything on you. But I'm liable to a stretch. I told you I'd protect you. So shut up and sit tight. She's deliberately asking for trouble. I'm going to see that she gets it. Where are you going now? To give her a last chance to pull in her horns. And if she doesn't, watch the fireworks. It's nice of you to come over again after I talked last night. I was afraid you might be resentful. Well, I had to come or you would have sent the probation officer to fetch me. <laughs> well, I hope I never have to bring you that way again. Sit down, dear. And I hope you aren't going to talk about the Caldwells again. Carol, this may seem a strange question to you, but I was wondering, why does it matter so much? Who your real parents were. Who they were doesn't matter, but what they were does. Have you any curiosity to, to see them? No. Unless to see my mother and tell her how much I hate her. She, she might have had a good reason for what she did. Perhaps it wasn't her fault. Judge Ellis, in my opinion, there isn't any reason for a mother to give up her child. No. No, I suppose you're right. I've said the same thing to others. But that's not what I want to talk about. It's regarding your position with Mr. Carson. I'm going to ask you to give it up. Why? Because of the environment? That. Because I... Well, I wouldn't like to see you involved in the scandal of a prosecution. Prosecution? Mr. Carson is to appear in my court on August 1st in answer to several complaints sworn out against him. But why pick on him? He's only... Only what? A blind? I don't understand what you mean. And I'm not going to give up my job. Mr. Carson gave me my chance to make good. And I'm not going to walk out on him. You're forgetting that I already have a charge against you, young lady. And if you don't resign within 24 hours, I shall have you put on probation or locked up in jail. Why, Carol. Oh, Mr. Wharton. Do you know what the judge is going to do? She's going to prosecute Mr. Carson and put me in jail. Oh, no, she isn't, Lady. Edith, you're making a sap of yourself. I wasn't kidding last night. Wait, Carol. Just a minute. Remember what I told you, Carol. 24 hours. It won't do you any good, Edith, to threaten that kid. She's on our side. Yes. So I found out. Now listen, Edith, I've tried to be nice. I thought you knew exactly where we stood. I know you can't do a thing without proof. I can get that. And it'll be enough to blast you out of office. What are you talking about? 
our marriage, and the fact that we had a child. Do you see the headlines? Judge Ellis placed his own child in orphanage. What will the opposition say to that? They'll want to know why. You know why. The marriage was annulled in my... Who'd parents... ever believe that? Everybody in town will think you have something to conceal. Now, if you think I don't mean business, just watch the papers for the dirt. Maybe I'd better resign, Mr. Carson. By staying on won't do you any good. And anyway, I'll be without a job. Don't worry about that, baby. I can always give you another one. But she threatens to put me in jail. <laughs> she won't do that. Because tomorrow you won't be here. What do you mean? I'm not taking any raps for Wharton. You're not going to run away. I'd be dumb not to, wouldn't I? Wharton doesn't have to worry. He's in the clear. But I'm not ditching you, baby. You're going with me. Oh, no, I'm not. Sure you are. We'll hide out until this thing blows over. I've got a lot of pals in the East. And they'll help us open up a joint of our own. Well, well, maybe we won't have to run away. Maybe Mr. Wharton will fix it up, because he was talking to the judge when I left. Okay. We'll wait till he gets back. But if I had my way, that judge would run into a little accident and we'd blow. Where are you going? Well, I have to get ready for tonight, haven't I? If we're going to open up as usual. Oh, <laughs> we're sure we're going to open up. We might as well grab off all we can. It may be our last chance. Well, maybe so. I'll be seeing you. Hello, is Bruce Jefferson there? This is Carol Caldwell. Hello, Bruce. I've got to see you right away. Yes, I'll meet you near the corner of Spruce and Oak. It's terribly important, so hurry, will you? All right, thanks. You know, this is the most amazing story I've ever heard. I find it rather hard to believe. If it weren't true, do you suppose I'd admit my part in it? Well, I don't doubt you, of course, but I couldn't possibly print a thing like that without the proof to back it up. Would the birth certificate be proof enough? You get that to me and I'll print your story. Hello, Bruce. Hello. Where to? No place. Gee, Carol, you look scared. I am scared. It's about Judge Ellis. She's going to close us up. I know it. I'm one of the complaining witnesses. Against me? No, against Carson. Throw you out of a job, but you'll be better off. Oh, I know it now. I've been such a fool, Bruce. Oh, I don't feel that way about it. Well, I, I'm out of a job, whether I like it or not. I can't go back to the Caldwell, so... Oh, well, take me back to my apartment. Listen, Carol, you don't have to go back to work. You know how I feel. Remember what I told you the other night at the club? Well, it still goes. Home, James, and don't spare the soldiers. And this is a woman who tells us how to raise our children. If there wasn't something funny about it, why has she kept it a secret all these years? Oh, who is it? It's Bruce, Mother. Oh, come in. <laughs> I'm going now. Oh, wait a minute, dear, wait a minute. What did you say? Oh, just a minute. Harry, when are you going to print that story about the judge? Why, who is it? Mrs. King. Oh. Well, as soon as I get the proof. As soon as he gets the proof. Dad, if you print that mess of lies, I'm walking out. Huh? I mean it. What's that? Why do you want to pick on her, even supposing it's true? She's helped more people in this town than you have subscribers on your paper. Bruce, I can't hear. Now, look here, young man. That's just about enough out of you. I'm sick and tired of your carrying the torch for that, well, that woman. Well, I'm not the only one. There are a lot of others who are grateful for what she's done. They're the ones who'll be running things here in a few years, and she's taught them how to run things right. Yeah, I'll call you later. It's so noisy here. She's done nothing but poison the minds of young people against their parents. That isn't true. She's only tried to show us that character and good citizenship are the things that matter, instead of selfishness and money grabbing. Are you accusing your father of being selfish? Why, he's given you everything. Sure, he's been swell ever since Judge Ellis told him off. Listen, Dad, by printing this stuff, you're linking yourself up with Carson and his gang. I don't want my father in a crowd like that. Carson has nothing to do with it. 
No, but Wharton has, and he's Carson's boss. Carol told me so. Say, that's news to me. Oh, well, that's the sort of news you ought to print. You ought to show what this mudslinging is all about. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to hear more about this. Well, I don't know anymore, but Carol and I are going to see the judge this afternoon and tell her. Maybe it'll do her some good. Carol, are you prepared to go on the witness stand and swear to this? Yes, if it'll do you any good. But, Judge, you ought to do something about the things people are saying. Why? They haven't been proven. I know, but if you don't make some sort of statement, well, everyone will believe it's true. Well, what statement could I make in answer to a lot of gossip? Anyway, you'll never know how much I appreciate your loyalty. He's like that with everyone, Judge Ellis. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be much use in being loyal to you, though. Why, Bruce? Well, she says that... Oh, look at the time. Hmm. You two are very much in love, aren't you? I am. I'd marry her right now. But she Don't thinks you it was... say it. Don't you dare say it. I see. Carol thinks she hasn't the right to be married until she knows. Carol, if... If I tried to find out the truth about your parents, would that settle things for you? Do you think you can? I... I don't know. Well, of course it would. It would change everything. Very well, then. I'll try. Oh, I'll love you as long as I live. Good night. One perfect hour with you. Once around the clock. Hello, sugar. It wasn't nice of you to quit your job without giving regular notice. You said you were going to leave town. I, I thought you'd gone. I... Yeah, I waited over a day when I saw that my girl didn't intend to go with me. Your girl? Didn't I pay you 60 bucks a week? I thought we'd run around together and have a good time. But you took a run out powder on me when I got into a jam. But I had to. The judge said that she... We'll skip that. I saw who drove you home. But it won't work. You're blowing town with me tonight. But I can't. I have to... Sure you can. We're leaving in my car right now. I got your grip back. But they'll trace you. They're bound to catch up with you. <laughs> Not where we're going. Come on, let's go. Leave me alone. Oh, sugar. Don't make me forget to be nice, do you? Hey, what's going on in here? Why, uh, I, um, <laughs> the little girl and I were eloping you. Sorry if we disturbed you, neighbor. Neighbor? <laughs> Judge Ellis had an idea you'd try to pull something like this. Come on. You're going to see the chief about a cell. Good night, miss. Well, here I am. I've searched the record since the year one, both here in that little town you sent me to, and there's absolutely no births recorded in the Ellis family since the judge's own, 39 years ago. But it must be there. It has to be. It's a matter of form. Yes, I know. But in cases like this, people often take assumed names. Yes, but what about the doctor? Didn't you get in touch with him? He'd remember the case. Yes, what about him? The doctor's dead. <whistles> I better get back to the office or we'll all be dead. How do you do, Mr. Jefferson? Hello, Lieutenant. Mr. Wharton? Yeah. I want you to meet a friend of mine from Washington. Hello, dear. What happened? Plenty. Did you get the fruit? Mm, I'll say. I knew it was true. Now we can have the judge for call. Not her. She's all right. It's Wharton. He's just been arrested on federal charges. What? Mm. Yes, he certainly had. He fooled. Why, do you know that he's been mixed up in some of the worst rackets in the East? Well, you got yourself into a fine mess, Dad. What do you mean? Well, about the judge. She could sue you for defamation of character or something. Well, the only person I talked to was your mother. Yes, and she's told everyone she knows. Maybe she'll haul you up in court, too. Bruce, what a horrible idea. If your mother only knew when to hold her tongue, we wouldn't be in all this mess. Why, what do you mean? 
You told the men at your office, didn't you? Well, that just about makes it unanimous. <laughs> Listen, Dad, why don't you write an editorial about this? Kill the gossip and point out how the judges brought the parents and children closer together. Say, you know, that's not a bad idea. Oh, you could tell her you swung over to her side. I've made a date for you to see you tomorrow anyway. I want Mother there, too. What for? Well, I'll tell you tomorrow. Will you, Dad? Come on, be a sport. Well, all right, son. It's a deal. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing how we think we're managing our children. Well, all the time, they're the ones who are managing us. <laughs> oh, you're jealous. Bruce and I owe you a lot. If you hadn't found out, I wouldn't have been able to go on. Are you sure there isn't a mistake? No, darling. Your mother came from a good family. And your father, his parents were prominent in political circles. That's all I was able to learn. And now it's time to begin. Well, then maybe I can manage the things here. Uh, uh, Bruce, you stand over there. That's it. Now. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> God bless you. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The Juvenile Court of Lake County is now in session. The Honorable Edith Ellis presiding.